Good afternoon, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It's going to be an awesome day in the Lord. I have got you in my kitchen. I actually just did a coaching session, a group coaching session, and I did it in my kitchen. So you all welcome to my kitchen. So awesome to have you on here. I'm going to wait just a couple minutes, and then I'm going to do just a very, very, very brief broadcast, encourage you and strengthen you. We're going to look at the brain today, and we're going to talk briefly about being in tune to Holy Spirit so that you do not give over to a spirit of fear. Amen. There's Chelsea, Sue Gailey, Kristen, Mary Holt, Marita. God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. Oh, thank you, Sue. Thank you. I, I like where my... Uh, oh, yay, Kristen. Kristen and Sue were in the coaching session that I just got through doing. We had a phenomenal time. A phenomenal time. So awesome to have you on here. And let me just grab my computer real quick. And it's so funny because I just remembered I forgot to turn my light on during my coaching session. So there I am. Woo! We can see me now, can't you? Oh my goodness. I am really bright in Jesus' name. That Remember, for those who saw the last teaching that I did on Monday, oh my goodness. If you have not seen it, it was phenomenal. Oh, thank you, Kristen. And it was a phenomenal teaching. And it was about Daniel 12, 3, where those that are bright, that shine like the stars, will one many to righteousness. Amen. Hey, Regina. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Reginald. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Jacqueline. Hey, Suzanne. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And it's going to be so super awesome. We're going to talk about, hey, Suzanne, I'm getting y'all straight to where my uh, camera is straight up and get y'all set. Hallelujah. Hey, Jenny. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Amy. Amy joined us too for the coaching session, and I'm just going to bring the word of hope to you in this time as we are looking at trials and difficulties, right? And so, God, we thank you. We welcome your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, that Holy Spirit speaks your message. He only speaks what you have given to him, and we ask, God, that you bring us wisdom from Holy Spirit speaking your message, giving us knowledge, giving us understanding, so we are able to walk in your undisturbed peace, letting it rule our heart and surpass our understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Eva. Hey, Deborah. Hey, Renee. Hey, Chris. Uh, hey, hey, everybody. In Jesus' name. And so we're going to look at a particular scripture. We're going to look at actually two scriptures. And these are my go-to scriptures. And we're going to look at what the enemy is doing in this hour. And God is going to, hey, Barbara, God bless you. Hey, Amber, God bless you. Hey, Diane. Hey, Kimberly. Hey, everybody. Glory to God. Everybody's on. Oh, Lawana, God bless you. Reginald's wife, Lawana, thank you for telling me, sister. God bless you. Hey, D, I love you, D. I miss you, D. Hey, Kim Spicer, I love you. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Colleen, man, here's Sherry. Here is all of my favorite people. Thank you for all joining in. And so, one of the things that God has given me is that Romans 12, 8 gift of exhortation to exhort the body. God also works with the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19, 10, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Victory! And that is seen with Jesus at the woman at the well in John 4, where Jesus tells the woman, look, you've had five husbands and the one you're living with is not your husband. And she says, I perceive you're a prophet. And that was the spirit of prophecy that reads your mail and tells you where you've been and where you are and what's keeping you where you are, which is about the mindset. And so that's what the spirit of prophecy does. And it breaks that mindset. And then, then God brings the gift of prophecy and he plants the seed of what is to come. His thoughts, his plans, his purpose for you. And so God uses me in that manner to bring exhortation to the body. And in saying so, I'm not going to pretty everything up. I'm not going to make everything look easy. And those of y'all who know me absolutely know that I am like that. And I do what is called the Navy Seals of Discipleship. It is the Word of God intense. Those of y'all who have been in my meetings, who have read my books, you know that I am super, super intense with the Word of God. It is the Navy Seals of discipleship. And so, as you're on this broadcast, you know that we're in a very deleterious hour where things are happening and we're uh, 
hold on one second, where things are happening and we're having to be circumspect and walk in wisdom and have understanding of what is happening in our emotions, deleterious, God wants me to look this up for you, deleterious means causing harm, causing harm or damage. So Holy Spirit, amen, Sharon, I'm going to keep it real, she knows, she made me a sign, amen, when I kept this saying on, amen, Andrea, Andrea knows, Andrea knows, I'm like a cheerleader and a general at the same time, and so this word deleterious is the word that Holy Spirit brought up in my spirit. We're in a deleterious time. That word means causing harm or damage. When we look at this word, we can look at the breakdown, and it comes from the Greek, which means noxious, okay? So let's look at this word noxious, and let's see where Holy Spirit takes us. Noxious is, oh my goodness, y'all are going to be so glad y'all are on. Holy Spirit is breaking this down, and I'm going to keep this very short. Noxious is harmful, poisonous, or very unpleasant. And it comes from the word Latin, noxa, and it means to harm. So this word means to be harmful and poisonous. And so we're in a deleterious time. And this, again, as I went over yesterday, I believe we are seeing a trial on this earth, in this nation, Revelation 3.10, that is to take on the earth. It is to be on the earth at the same time. But God is protecting us. He's protecting us from this deleterious, this harmful, this poisonous time. What is the harm? What is the poison? The enemy wants to cause fear. I've done teachings. I've written about it in a book in great detail with physiology, anatomy, science, and, and God has had me break it down in God's Bible School, the Prophet Session for the spirit of knowledge about the stress response and about the amygdala. And so God wanted me to bring this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for you to understand what's happening with your mindset and for me to bring you a word in your vocabulary to use very frequently which is a reconciliation. You're reconciling. Your brain is always trying to reconcile with your emotions what you're experiencing. And so we're in a different experience right now. Things are happening in our lifetimes that we have never witnessed. Things are happening that our body is saying it's overwhelmed, the stress response, and our mind is trying to reconcile. It's trying to pull out and open up memories that you have an association with in order for you to reconcile what is going on in this present time. And so God wants me to bring peace and we're going to look at the mind because the main thing is God does not want you in fear. He does not want you to feel like you're losing your mind. And even if you are a seasoned Christian and you're in the word, and you know what is really going on, and God has given you dreams, He's given you visions, He's given you scriptures, you know what is going on, you will lose it if you don't keep focused on Christ Jesus. And so it doesn't matter how seasoned you are, if you're new in the faith, this is for everybody. This is a foundational core issue, and it is about God's undisturbed peace. We see actually... In scripture, as it relates to that piece, my stomach is growling, John, John 15, we see with John 14, John 15, and John 16, we see that undisturbed peace. Jesus brings us that undisturbed peace when he tells us that he fills us with joy. We see in verse 11 of John 15, I have told you these things that my joy and delight may be in you, and that your joy and gladness may be a full measure and complete and overflowing. When we walk in undisturbed peace, and that undisturbed peace, it causes us to overflow with joy. Where do we see this? We see this in Hebrews 1, 9, where Messiah was anointed with the oil of gladness because he loves righteousness, he loved righteousness, and he hated lawlessness, right? 
And so we're looking at the mind. And in the mind, in part of your brain, there's the part that is called the amygdala. And this is the part that I write about in my book with the stress response. And so the stress response is going to be initiated largely by the hypothalamus, generally from what you see and what you hear. Generally, okay? And the hypothalamus is the control center of your brain, and it's going to determine where signaling is going to go, where it's going to send the message. And so if it thinks the situation is harmful, it's going to send the message to your pituitary, and your pituitary is going to send a signal to your adrenals and say, we are stressed out. We're stressed out. And then all of a sudden, the cortisol is going to be released. It's going to go to your hippocampus, and it's going to flood your brain, and you're just going to be in flight or fight mode. You're just going to shut down and not be able to function, and that's what the enemy wants with fear. But there is a differentiation with your amygdala. Fear, panic can be initiated in the amygdala part of the brain when especially there is smell or touch. There's different sensory memory neurons that are operative that immediately send fear to the amygdala. The amygdala is important because the amygdala is the place of fear conditioning. But look at it as the end of a continuum. So fear conditioning is on this end of the amygdala. Also on this end is reward reinforcement. It is behavioral change. So if you're going to change, you're also going to be initiated in the amygdala. And so the way that I would analogize the amygdala is it's a megaphone, okay? It's a megaphone. So it's a megaphone saying, you feel fear or you feel good. So that is what I would say the analogy of the amygdala is. Now, understand this, and I write about this in my book, and I even do it on my videos about parents dealing with children, young, young adults, that are suicidal. And I get into the amygdala, and the thing that highly stimulates the amygdala, okay, this is it. The thing that highly stimulates fear is emotional faces, emotional faces. And so words and pictures as it relates to the amygdala do not stir it as much as the person's emotional face. It immediately triggers the amygdala and it kicks into overdrive. And if it is negative, then the panic attack it's just going to blow up and it's going to go straight to your pituitary, to your adrenals, and forget it. You are in full panic mode. And that's what we're seeing right now is that people are stirred up because what are they doing? They're watching the news. They're watching all of these things and they see people's what? Expressions. They see people's faces. And that's also when your mirror neurons are operating in your brain and you feel kind of like a fainting ghost emotion, even physically of what other people feel. And it's because you have those mirror neurons and it causes you to be around in that condition. Thank you, Chris, God bless you. And so what do we do to get out of fear? We mitigate stress. Stress is not flipped off in humans. I get into that in my book by Dr. Robert Sapolsky explaining his whole study for 30 years with baboons and humans. Stress is mitigated. And so how do you mitigate stress? You get into a place where you get into your frontal lobe, this place of your consciousness that says, you're not going to be eaten by a lion today. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And that's one of the sayings that I give my youngest son, Matthew, when he is in that stress response, he automatically knows to say, I'm not going to be eaten by a lion today. I'm not going to be eaten by a lion. And so you have to have that uh, protocol set in place 
For if you should enter a stress response, and another thing to do is breathing techniques where you breathe slowly in and out of your mouth as though you are got a straw inside of your mouth and you just inhale and you exhale. And what you're doing is you're shifting your brain from the stress response and you're bringing it back into control. You're in control. You have control over your mind. And so we're going to read John. We're going to read. Uh, we're going to read First Timothy, Second Timothy, one seven, and then we're going to read First John four eighteen. Those are our two scriptures today, and God is going to give you revelation. Amen. First John four eighteen, and we're also going to do Second Peter. 1 7 2 Peter 1 7 these are awesome scriptures and I will tell you that be at peace things are not what they seem I know people think I have lost my mind I'm absolutely nuts but I have gotten confirmation from God that I need to know that all is well things are not what they seem you have to be the thermostat for the atmosphere you have to be the one that's in that undisturbed peace that Jesus Christ came to bring. Amen. So 2 Peter 1, 7 says, out of the Amplified Classic, and in exercising godliness and... Bro oh, I went to 2 Peter. That's a good one. Let's read 2 Peter too while we're here. Glory to God. And in exercising godliness develop brotherly affection because what drives out fear we're going to get into it first john 4 18 love right so listen to this too and in exercising godliness develop brotherly affection and in exercising brotherly affection develop christian love is that not perfect as we get ready for second timothy 1 7 so let's look at second timothy 1 7 and let's see where Holy Spirit shows us that we have a sound mind. Amen. A well-balanced, a sound mind. Scripture says out of the Amplified Classic, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and fawning fear, but He has given us power. He's given us a spirit of power, of love, of a calm. Calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. And I will tell you, the enemy's plans is to trigger the amygdala. Where do we see this? Good. We see this as I wrote about it in the last chapter, which is phenomenal because it brings my dream in about that chapter and teaching on the amygdala as I teach on Jeremiah 1, where after Jeremiah is called a prophet, and he says, God, but I am a youth. And God says, do not say I'm a youth. I've called you. And then God asked him, what do you see? And Jeremiah said, I see the, an almond of an almond tree, the blossom of an almond tree. And so he saw that almond. And why is that important? Because after that, in chapter one, we see that God also says to Jeremiah, if you do not speak what I tell you to, I will confound you in front of their faces. Now, why is this important? What's, what does this have to do with the brain, with the amygdala, with the fear conditioning? Because the word amygdala means almond. It comes from the Greek word almond. Is that not crazy? Because your amygdala is shaped like an almond. And God showed me where he was putting grace on Jeremiah's amygdala. He was putting an undisturbed peace where the enemy could not confound him with the emotional faces, the stares of others. And so one of the things that I do over young people, over children, especially young kids, is I'll anoint them and I'll say, God, make their face strong. Ezekiel 3, 7 and Jeremiah 1, make their face strong where they do not see emotional faces. Make their face strong, Father God, and do not let it touch their person. And so that is one of the things that is absolutely incredible that you can pray over yourself like God did for Jeremiah, like God did for Ezekiel, is he made their face strong so that amygdala would not be triggered 
and immediately create that stress response. And so let's look at 1 John 4.18 as we end here. And God is just going to give you some understanding. And we're going to reframe words. And then we're going to be through this broadcast. Scripture says, There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. But full grown, complete, perfect love. Now listen to that again. There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. But full grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror. For fear brings with it the thought of punishment. And so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love, is not yet grown into love's completion, complete perfection. And so perfect love does what? Drives out fear. I know this well because I was so oppressed by the spirit of fear. And for those that have gotten my books and have listened to my teachings, you know and you've heard the testimony of how God by the power of Holy Spirit drove out fear. And so this is a time to not be afraid. We have been given the undisturbed peace and that peace of being undisturbed is love. It is the perfect love of God. Let me get that one real quick for you because God wants me to get this scripture for you. And we see it in the Gospel of John. Hold on one second. We see it in the Gospel of John. Let's go to John 14, 27. That's it, John 14. John 14, 27. And this is the peace that God leaves for you and I. And you have to know in this time... Let me tell you what, there's only one Savior. There's only one God, okay? There's only one Savior. There's only one God. There's only one Spirit, Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the Trinity. True Spirit, Holy Spirit. There's only one Spirit of Truth, Holy Spirit. There's only one Savior, Jesus Christ. And there's only one God, the Father Himself, right? And this is where you have to be resolute. And you have to know that outside of this, that you can only trust God alone, okay? Do not put your faith in man, in people. Do not put your hope in people. You're going to be disappointed. It leads to discouragement. Put your faith and hope in God alone. Remember, in this hour, we're talking again, which I've been writing about and teaching on since last summer, about the mind and the body connection. Romans 12, 1. Make a decisive dedication over your body, consecrated as holy unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12, 2. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of the mind. The mind and the body connection. And a lot of people are trying to get this in their brain down to their body. And that's not how it works. It works from your body, your emotions, up to your brain, where Holy Spirit brings undisturbed peace. You might not have words to it yet. You don't understand it. But somehow, you feel peace inside of this temple. And then all of a sudden, Holy Spirit brings understanding. He brings logic. He brings God's reason. And this is what we're looking at in this hour. Because the brain tries to reason everything out, okay? The brain tries to reason everything out. And when we look at intellect, intellect is the brain's reasoning and understanding of things that are abstract, okay? So your neurons in your brain, in this circumstance, do not have a file to go to to say this entire circumstance, this entire event that we find ourselves in is in this place in my past. I can reconcile that. I can make an understanding of that. Your brain does not understand this circumstance. It's all new to each and every one of us. And so your brain is trying to reconcile it with your emotions. It's trying to say, this is like that, but understand We're getting a new reasoning, a new season 
We haven't been this way before. This is totally new. And so God alone will bring you understanding by the peace of God to know everything is going to be all right. I don't understand what I'm seeing on the news. I don't understand what I'm reading about on social media. But all I have to know is in my body, God is telling me everything is going to be all right. And so all of a sudden, God will bring you new memories, new images in this circumstance. And it is going to be by the means of the word. It's going to be by the means of fellowship. So all of us are on here right now. We're getting our oxytocin and we're getting peace. We're going, thank you, Jesus. I'm not going through this crisis alone. And so our brain is getting some oxytocin, which is the trust hormone that says, I enjoy being with this group of people. I trust them. They're not going to harm me. They're not going to poison me. They don't have deleterious actions, intentions meant and aimed at me. But I trust that these people are looking for Jesus Christ like I am in the Word of God. And so this is what our brain is making new images of in this circumstance that is absolutely crazy to the natural mind. And so what I would encourage you to do, what the Lord encourages you to do, is get in places of fellowship. Meet with one another. Talk with one another. Fellowship with one another. And create new memories to reconcile this event with your emotions. Now, it doesn't mean that everything might look rosy. It doesn't mean that there might not be some more news that comes up that could cause a panic. What it means is, is that you're choosing God's undisturbed peace and you're going to meet with other believers and you're going to pray and you're going to pray and you're going to keep on praying and God is going to be with his people. Amen. God promises in, Rome, in uh, Revelation 310 that he protects us from the hour of trial and testing. Look, saints of God, we were created for this test. We were created for such a time as this. We are the light. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm not human and at times I might allow the fear of the enemy to come into my mind, but I have to be aware and I have to take those thoughts captive. Second Corinthians 10, 4 through 8. I have to take those thoughts captive and I have to pursue peace and I have to create new memories, new images, right? And so as we end here, I just pray that God bless you, that God bless you. I pray over your amygdala in your brain that it is protected by the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray that your face is strong and that Holy Spirit protect your eyes and your ears from seeing things and hearing things that you do not need to see. And I pray that you have a well-balanced, a sound mind. And I declare that God's perfect love drives out fear in you as he brings you into a maturity to know who you are in Christ Jesus, to have the very mind of Christ his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll do a teaching tomorrow, amen.